This is Jared with Tigris Consulting, showing you how to do GL accounts opening balances with SAP Business One. All right, well, welcome everybody to today's uh, quick how-to guide per se on um, one of the, the very initial things you'll do um, at Go Live with your system of SAP Business One, and that is bringing over your opening balances. And the very first one on the list there that you'll be working on is your GL account opening balances from your legacy system. And you know, there's a, there really is a lot of work into getting this prepared and ready for cutover. Um, you know, there's, there's working in your old legacy system, getting exports out, getting it into the right format. And there's, there's lots of scenarios that can happen here that can make this sometimes a complex process. But I want to I wanna simplify it and, and just show you at its core what this would look like, um, taking all those steps out and all the different options you may have, but saying this is, these are the main things that you can do on how to actually bring your opening balances from your GL accounts from your legacy system into SAP Business One. There's a couple of options to do that. Um, and once again, the option you choose will be dependent upon the scenario that you're in. You know, some, some settings that you've made may push you into going one route versus another route. Maybe a condition that you have within your company may, may help you go one route versus the other. And so you'll wanna take a look at these options and make a decision with your, with your consultants and your team of what's gonna be the best way to do this. Uh, maybe the best way is this way it's going to save you the most amount of time or maybe it's a different scenario so let's let's show you that and so what what i'm going to start off with here is just a few you know help portal guides from the tools that sap gives you up here with the help portal for for the entire sap business one software and so the first is just kind of this you know topic of opening balance for gl accounts and you can see here as we scroll through here, it gives us a couple of, of options. And so, you know, at the cutover period, you're gonna bring in your GL accounts other than your AR and AP control accounts and also the inventory accounts. So that's a good thing to note is as you're doing this, remember, you're not gonna bring these, these three types of accounts in because they're gonna have their own separate opening balance import method that will increase or you know, put in the balance of these accounts for you. So these are not gonna be there, but for all the other accounts, there's really two main ways of importing it. One is using the module that they give you called opening balance transactions. Um, and for the GL accounts, it's called you know, GL account opening balance. Or the other is just through journal entries. And those journal entries can be manually created or you know, through DTW, which is another import tool. Uh, that SAP gives you to import multiple transactions. So you really have two options here. And I'm gonna focus today on the using the opening balance uh, module itself, because there's multiple ways to even do that within this system. Um, the journal entry is a little more straightforward. And so with the opening balance transaction, you can see here is the file path to get there. Um, so it's under the administration module. Alternatively, you could just search for it um, using this, this little key, this um, keyword over here. Um, but when, once you get in there, it's gonna tell you, you know, you'll bring it in under this column called OB. Um, and it's gonna ask you to make sure you, you follow a couple things. Um, you know, you're gonna make sure that you're using the appropriate debit or credit balance for the US localizations, there's a setting that defaults you to say, hey, positive numbers are gonna be debit balances, negative numbers are gonna be credit balances. So as long as you stuck with the default setting, um, you should be good there. But it's gonna walk you through just kind of some of the things to keep in mind. Um, it's gonna remind you also that, you know, you don't need to bring in your accounts receivables or payables, the, you know, inventory opening balances, um, like I told you, the display credit balance and negative signs. And then it's going to also give you some options here for, you know, the, the way to do it through journal entries. Um, and then the final two things it's going to remind us here of is it's just some tips and tricks. These aren't required, but they, they will help you and it's, it's beneficial. And this is for your cash accounts. So as an example of your bank accounts, 
You know, sometimes in your legacy system, you may have not finished your entire reconciliation process yet. And so you, as you bring that over, you may want to consider not bringing over the total balance in your bank account. Let's say you had $100,000 in there. You may want to only bring over the amount of what's been reconciled so far and bring over the each individual transaction that is yet to be reconciled as a separate journal entry line. Um, and the reason for that is, is that it will make it easier for you when you want to do a reconciliation after go live. So just different things to consider here uh, about the opening balance. And then a few, two other, two other um, you know, help files that I wanna walk you through is, this is the actual process guide for using the module I told you about. If we were gonna stick with this option, opening balance module. This is the procedure, it tells you where to go to do that. Um, you know, how to set your due dates you know, working within fiscal years or if you're going to be doing, you know, halfway through a fiscal year and you want to, to bring the transactions on those dates, what to do. It shows you what columns to enter your opening balance into. And then if you have unique scenarios with local currency, system currency, some of those things I was talking about earlier, some things of how to do that. But this is the guide that we're going to use if we're going to do it through that tool. And the other option is if we're, if we're entering the balances in the tool instead of just manually, we may want to have an import you know, file prepared that we just, instead of having to copy or paste or enter them one by one, we may want to create an Excel file that can be imported into that module. And so this gives us a little bit of idea of the formatting for that and how we want to create that, that file. It's going to be a text file. It's going to have you know, certain types of columns that you can fill out. And so I'll walk you through those today. But that's you know, real briefly, your help files are going to go a long way. Know that they're here for you. They've got a lot of good information, but we're going to minimize those and get into the into the action here. So <clears throat> here is my Excel file that I put together with my legacy system and my data. And I've got two here. One, one tab for if I was just going to manually copy and paste those in or manually enter them in. And another one if I was going to do an import from Excel. And I'll walk you through both. But first, let's come over here and open up the module we're going to be using. So as it you know, showed in the, in the help file there, it's under administration, system initialization, opening balances, and there it is, GL accounts opening balances. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you can just use this GL and start typing in what you got, and it will, will find those keywords and bring it up for you. And then here, this initial screen will pop up and say, hey, which... Which, um, which drawers of your chart of accounts are you gonna be bringing opening balances in for? So if you're bringing in at the very beginning of your fiscal year, you might not care about you know, your P&L account. So you can uncheck all these. You know, or maybe you're gonna bring everything, leave them all checked or from one account to another. Kind of just filters what's gonna show up when you click okay on the next screen. So I unchecked all my P&L accounts. So I just have my kind of balance sheet accounts here as you can see. And then from layout or kind of how this module looks is over here at the top you have some header information and then the bottom is all the the you know the tabular information within the matrix itself so most important thing up here is what's going to be your you know opening balance account that's going to be the offset account on the journal entry that gets created for the, the debits and credits to these um, usually it's a very you know you may have a, a separate account just called opening balance account maybe opening balance geo account you know, I have one set here, but it's, a, it's at the very end of my chart accounts. Um, you can see here, I, if I open it up, it's in my other revenues and expenses drawers, just something totally different. Um, but you're gonna wanna make sure you set the appropriate account here. Ultimately, it should, it should get close to washing out. You shouldn't have a balance left in here after everything goes through, the credits and debits should balance out. Um, but anything that's remaining will get posted to that account. And then obviously, you're gonna have your date your references, remarks, anything that you want to show up on these journal entries for, for these transactions. Um, and then the final is the matrix. The really the most important things that you're concerned about here is going to be your due date for all of these. And then usually just this opening balance local currency. Um, you're going to see other columns here that could have, you know, if you're doing a second opening balance, you may see a, what the current balance is. You may see you know, if you're going to be using local currencies and system currencies, you may see different things here. If you have different currencies themselves, you might have another column to show you the different currency for each currency. 
but for a general sake, you're usually just gonna use this one right here, local currency opening balance and the due date. So let's pretend we're gonna use my first method. And the simplest is, you know, you may just go through here and go one by one and you might just say, okay, what do I got on my paper for cash on hand? All right, I've got $500 of a debit balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in $500. Then you can just go one by one and enter whatever the balance is for all these accounts till you get to the very end. You know, this might take you a while going one by one, maybe an hour or so, but it's pretty simple. You just enter the, the amount for the account to match it up. You know, it doesn't matter the order that things are in, you can just go through and populate them and make sure you do the due date as well. Now, if you have things in the right order, let's say I, I you know, did maybe a, a, some, some magic on my Excel file and I used a VLOOKUP and I exported this table over here. You know, as an example, you could just, you know, copy and paste this table to get the exact order that things were in. Let's say I did that. Maybe I did a VLOOKUP, got all my opening balances brought over in the exact order that I wanted them. Great, that's okay. It's like, as an example here, I've got all my assets in the appropriate order. I could just simply come in here, add all these, copy the column, right here and paste and it's going to bring over all my asset data there so I did a good job if you're using this this method of just kind of copy and paste a column at a time one couple important things to note is you know, number one you got to make sure it's in the right order you you know you might have one simple mistake that you forgot to have an account on there or you did something and everything gets off by one it's going to create a big mess so that's make sure, make sure, and double check everything's in the right order. The second thing is make sure that you have a zero dollar amount if a, 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 you know, an account was not gonna have a balance. So example, we did not wanna bring over a balance for the accounts receivables or the inventory because that was gonna happen later. So I brought over a zero balance. If it's in your Excel file as a empty and you don't have a zero here, sometimes SAP, when you do the copy and paste, We'll just ignore these and automatically bring 200 up to the next area. So is, if you're gonna bring nothing over, it's a good idea to go ahead and just put a zero in there. And so that way it keeps the order that you have things in. So that's, that's another method. And the final method is you know, using in the import from Excel button down here. And this is, this is useful if, if, as an example, you know things were totally out of order and you didn't want to get things in order. Um, and you knew the account code, you know, of everything, then this may be a good method. Now, where it can be its downside is sometimes, especially if you're using the setting for segments on your GL account, your account code not, isn't necessarily what you see here. The system creates a system code in the back end, and I'll show it to you here on my other import file here that looks a little bit like this. You know, you can see it looks totally different. It has nothing to do with the number. It's just a systematic code that represents an account. And that might be hard for you to find. And so if that's the case, that might steer you away from using this method. But if you're able to get at that information, which you can through a simple query of the, the chart of accounts table, OACT, um, you may be able to put together a little import file. It looks like this, where I've got a couple columns of data that I'm looking for. I've got my due date. I've got my account code, and then I've got my opening balance amount. And you'll notice here, when you're creating this template, I don't have a header row, that's not needed here. Um, and I've saved it as a TXT file, not as an Excel file, but a TXT, a tab delimited file. And so here's all the accounts for my liabilities. And so if I wanted to use this method, all I'd have to click on to continue working with the liability accounts is come in here and say, okay, import from Excel. And it's gonna allow you to say, okay, what type of data is in what column? So if you remember here, I've got, you know, column A was my due date, column B was my code, and column C was my opening balance. So if those were wrong, I could just come in here and select which one was for which column. And then once I've got that in the right format, all I have to do is come click on this, find the file, and there it is, my TXT format, brought it in up here, ready to go, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click import. And there you go, it brought over now balances for my liabilities. And you see it, anything that 
didn't have a value, it left it empty, and the stuff that it brought over, it brought in. And remember, I mentioned it earlier, and it mentioned in the help file, negatives are credits and positives are debits, um, usually by default. As long as you don't have that the other setting in there, that's going to be the rule you want to use. Now, if you did the import and something happened, it would pop up with a little window here, and it would let you know what the error was. Maybe you left a header in there and it's telling you, hey, this is an in invalid value. You just go and delete the header. Or maybe you've, you, know, um, you, you forgot to get the system codes and you put this code in here and you were using segmentations. It's going to tell you that that's not a valid code. So you may get different things you just got to fix in your file and re-import it and it'll bring it back in. But once you're ready, you got everything in here, just double check everything is good to go. Once again, make sure you got your dates. I've seen that happen a lot of times. People forget they bring the wrong date in and then they got to redo everything you know, all over again or make sure the remarks are good. Make sure you got the right opening balance count. And once you're satisfied, you just click add and the system's going to go ahead and bring over those opening balances for you. So I'll go ahead and click add here. You can see it's working down here. The progress bar is going. And then once it's finished, you can verify that it went through one of two ways. You can either just go in and take a look at the journal entries. You can look at the chart of accounts real quick, or you could bring up the opening balance module that we were in one more time and see that. So let's bring up that opening balance module one more time. You can see now the balance column is showing balances, positives, negatives, you know, et cetera. We're looking good. Or if you wanted, you could come in here and look at your chart of accounts. And then you can just kind of go one by one and click on one of the accounts and see what the balance is. Okay, it looks good. Um, and then the alternative method is you could even just go look at your journal entries and see, hey, did a journal entry get created? Yep, and sure enough, there's an, a journal entry for that account. There's a journal entry for that account. And I can just keep scrolling through one by one and seeing those and see where it hits that that offset account that we had selected earlier. And there's the dates that we selected. There's the remarks. Um, so I can very clearly see that, that they went through and that they're looking good. So that is how you use the opening balance module to bring in your opening balances. Like, like the help file said, you also have another option. You could go ahead and just bring in journal entries. You can just create these one by one or big mass journal entry to do everything and have your offset account for any differences. That, that, would be, that would be possible. The other thing you could do is create the journal entry transactions through the data transfer workbench, DTW, and import them through there. I'm not going to show you how to do that today, but it is an option. I like the opening balance one just because it shows up with a, a certain mark when you're looking at your, your um, financials. So if I come here and look at my chart of account, and I looked at this specific account, you can see here that these transactions that came in have an OB on them. So I know that this is part of the opening balance. Um, just nice, you know, for, for reporting purposes to see what the opening balance is and what was not. So all right, that's it for uh, the, the quick uh, overview and how-to video for GL account opening balances.